President Biden proposes creating a minimum corporate tax rate of 15 percent as a way to pay for an infrastructure bill. That's down from the initial 28 percent proposed. He also floats a plan to increase funding for the IRS to tighten tax enforcement. The Justice Department will elevate ransomware investigations to a similar level of priority as terrorism. That's in an effort to defeat cyber criminals threatening the nation. And supersonic flights are on their way back to the commercial air travel market. United Airlines has agreed to buy 15 supersonic jets from Boom Technology. Tune in to Deep Dive as we explore these topics and more. Hello and welcome. This is Deep Dive and I'm Tiffany Meyer. To tax or not to tax? As President Biden and Republicans hammer out differences on the infrastructure proposal, Biden is offering to lower the proposed tax hikes. Initially set at 28 percent, the new rate is 15 percent. To enforce it, Biden proposes tighter tax enforcement by the IRS. This comes as Biden and Republicans continue negotiating on a bipartisan infrastructure package. Biden's initial offer was a $2.3 trillion plan that included hiking the corporate tax rate to 28 percent and spending on social programs. Republicans came back with a $568 billion plan focused on physical infrastructure. The latest compromise has Biden trimming his latest proposal down to $1.7 trillion. And Republicans made an offer of just under a $1 trillion. Republicans say they won't support a plan that increases the corporate tax rate, which was slashed to 21 percent during the Trump administration. Senator Shelley Moore Capital is leading the negotiations for Republicans. She says the two sides are inching toward one another. Capitol says some of the money from the COVID-19 relief package has nothing to do with the virus. She and Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell say unspent money from that package should go towards infrastructure instead. Democrats disagree. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said in March, Biden shares Senator Warren's view that, quote, middle class families are paying more than their fair share and those at the top are not doing their part. So certainly he has that shared objective. The Treasury Department also discussed the global corporate minimum tax rate during a recent meeting with G20 leaders, saying Treasury proposed to the steering group that the global minimum tax rate should be at least 15 percent, adding Treasury underscore that 15 percent is a floor and that discussion should continue to be ambitious and push that rate higher. The Biden administration is also seeking international cooperation on the global corporate minimum tax rate. That's in an effort to at least partially offset any disadvantages that might arise from the administration's proposal to raise the U.S. corporate tax rate to 28 percent, now 15 percent. The move is seen as a key to funding the Biden administration's massive infrastructure proposal. White House Press Secretary Saki says the White House and Republicans are negotiating in good faith and looking for areas of agreement. The two sides are set to continue negotiations Friday and may work into the weekend. And now let's turn from the Treasury to the Justice Department. Ransomware attacks are now being given the same priority level as terrorism. This comes after several recent cyber attacks targeted key infrastructure and industries in the U.S. The latest attack hit a ferry service for Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts. While the ferries are still running, the online systems were compromised. Customers are told to use cash as online bookings are down. Ransomware hackers recently disrupted operations at the world's largest meat supplier, JBS. And the attack on the Colonial Pipeline added to fears of gas prices rising. The Justice Department says they have created a task force in Washington that will coordinate all ransomware investigations. Currently, those investigations are handled by U.S. attorneys' offices in different states. Reuters says it will help authorities draw necessary connections between separate attacks. Principal Associate Deputy Attorney General at the department, John Carlin, tells Reuters it's a specialized process to ensure we track all ransomware cases, regardless of where it may be referred. It's a specialized process to ensure we track all ransomware cases, regardless of where it may be referred in this country, so you can make the connections between actors and work your way up to disrupt the whole chain. The department says this model has been used in terrorism cases, but never before with ransomware. The Justice Department also asks U.S. attorneys to also share information about other kinds of cybersecurity cases. 
The U.S. has been ramping up security measures lately, with Biden signing an executive order after the colonial pipeline attack. Biden said that will help improve the nation's cybersecurity. It seeks to better equip federal agencies with cybersecurity tools. It also encourages the private sector, which operates much of the nation's critical infrastructure, to improve its own cybersecurity standards. Under the new executive order, a system will be enabled on federal networks to continually monitor and respond to cyber threats. It also creates a cybersecurity safety review board. They'll meet after major cyber attacks to analyze and make recommendations going forward. And as for America's burger supply chain being at stake, major meat processor JBS says it's making significant process in resolving the problem. That's after the ransomware attack earlier this week. Employees of the biggest meat processing firm on earth, JBS, returned to work on Wednesday. It's just a day after the company's beef operations stopped following a ransomware attack. JBS is the second big company that's recently suffered a ransomware attack following Colonial Pipeline in May. Experts say this is because such companies have the money to pay and need to resolve the problem quickly because they're vital to the economy. An anonymous source tells CNBC the hacker group Revol is behind the attack. Cybersecurity ratings firm BitSight says about 70 percent of the food production industry is at an elevated risk of attack relative to the market because of cybersecurity performance. JBS USA CEO says we have cybersecurity plans in place to address these types of issues and we are successfully executing those plans. He thanks the White House and the FBI for their help. The White House said the perpetrators are likely a criminal organization based in Russia. The Biden administration and the Agriculture Department offered assistance after JBS notified the White House it was attacked. The company says it's not yet aware of any evidence that data from its customers, employees or suppliers has been compromised. But JBS said resolving the incident will take time and that may delay certain transactions from its customers and suppliers. The company temporarily let go of thousands of employees without pay. The CEO said the attack has halted feeding operations and prevented cattle from arriving at feedlots. Cyber attacks have become a big concern after the Russian-based Nobilium, thought to be behind the SolarWinds hack, launched a new campaign targeting over 150 government agencies and think tanks. There are concerns that the cyber attack will cause meat shortages in the U.S. That's because 23 percent of domestic beef production went on pause when JBS suspended its computer systems in North America. And a pork plant in Iowa has already been affected by the ransomware attack. And now the timing of the JBS attack is also raising some fears. That's because meat prices have been rising. April's pork and beef prices were up from the same time last year. Pork was up nearly 5 percent and beef over 3 percent higher than the same time last year. That's due to labor shortages, restaurant reopenings, rising grade and transportation costs, and high demand for meat exports. Another factor, Memorial Day weekend led the summer grilling season, which is also fueling more demand for meat. And now for something lighter, supersonic flights are on their way back to the commercial air travel market. United Airlines has agreed to buy 15 supersonic jets from Boom Technology. Supersonic means faster than the speed of sound. It can slash travel time in half. Imagine flying from New York City to London in under four hours. Normally a seven-hour flight, it'll now be just 3.5 hours. And what about Los Angeles to Sydney? From 15 hours down to six hours and 45 minutes. Boom says tickets will cost 5000 per seat. But United says it's too early for pricing. So what do these jets look like? Well, similar to Concords, another type of supersonic aircraft. But Boom says its Overture jets are 75 percent cheaper to operate and more environmentally friendly. Overture jets cost $200 million each. They can travel 1,300 miles per hour or about twice as fast as conventional jetliners. United plans to start piloting the planes in 2029. Catching this type of superspeed flights hasn't been possible since 2003. That's when the other supersonic jet Concorde retired. That one cost a fortune, took up a lot of gas, and made such a racket breaking the sound barrier, it would wake small children. It got so bad that Congress banned supersonic flights over American soil in the 1970s. 
It wasn't until October 2018 when then-President Trump signed a bill directing the Federal Aviation Administration to consider lifting the ban that supersonic flights could be considered again. Now, it's unclear where President Biden stands on supersonic travel. And with the revival on net zero emissions and noise muffling tech, supersonic startups are back in the game. But it's a difficult field. Booms never actually built a full-scale version of its Overture aircraft. It'll need to clear regulatory checks before passengers can board in 2029. And one of the leading supersonic jet makers, Arion, shut down just last month. The company announced in May, in the current financial environment, it has proven hugely challenging to close on the scheduled and necessary large new capital requirements to finalize the transition of the AS-2 into production. On top of financial troubles, there were also concerns about fuel efficiency and noise regulations. But what do you think? Let me know below. Thanks for tuning in to Deep Dive. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and have a wonderful weekend.